mic check, two, one, two, bitch. What's up, guys? It's the nearly disembodied head of DDP because I chose to wear the Kelly Green new Dallas Prospect t-shirt, and as a result, I barely show up. So I decided to go extra spiffy and show some impeccable, impeccable fashion sense rocking the blazer and the beanie because that's the next level style sense that I clearly possess. But regardless, we're not here to talk about my beanie or my blazer. We're here to talk the Cowboys 36-35 regular season finale. Thrilling, thrilling victory here. And rightfully so. It's not a game that the Cowboys had to have. It made no difference on their playoff seating. The only thing that could have really changed in this game is if the Giants had won, they would have been picking as low as 12th. And if they lost they would be picking as high as fourth. So the Giants were actually the ones with a lot to lose, and yet they played, they balled out. Like, they did not hold back. They wanted this win, even though it really only served the purpose of hurting them. Dallas, of course, really wanted 10-6 and six for symbolic reasons, I guess. They wanted to show, A, more momentum, and B, that it was an improvement from last year's 9-7 and seven record as well. And you know what? Credit to them. Despite sitting... Uh, some injured players like Zach Martin, they sat him out. They sat out Tyron Smith. That's more rest. Zeke was a last-minute healthy scratch as well. And defensively, Tyrone Crawford was out. He will play in the playoff game, but he did not play at New York. And so Dallas was going to have to do something it could not do last year. And that was when, with kind of a taped-together offensive line without Zeke and rolling out Dak for at least half the game, but it became clear Dak wanted to play the entire game. And there were a lot of questions about how effective he would be. The Cowboys trying to find a tune-up and trying to find momentum going into the playoffs. If they rolled out Dak for the entirety of a game and he stunk it up, it would have been a, it would have been the opposite of what they wanted. It would have been a complete confidence killer going into their matchup with the Seattle Seahawks this coming Saturday. But To their credit, and mostly to Dak's credit, they came to play. Now, the defense wasn't as sharp, despite having most all of its guys. It wasn't as sharp as we've seen throughout this season. For instance, it gave up 30 points for the first time this season. And, you know, a 5-10 Giants squad was able to move the ball, despite not having Odell Beckham Jr. on the field. So there, there were some concerns there. You know, Byron Jones getting burned. Awuzie, he gets an interception in the end zone on the Giants' opening possession. And then the rest of the game, they complete like two passes for 23 yards against him. So he did very well in the game. But some of the other guys gave up some occasional plays. And it just kind of muddied the waters a little bit for Dallas. But the real story won Dak Prescott because holy crap, Dak looked sharp. Now, not off the very jump. From the jump, he was still a little bit shaky, but he clearly found momentum. And we see him find rhythm and a real connection that has started to be better in recent weeks. But this was like the coming out party for the tight end Jarwin for Dallas. Seven catches, 119 yards, three touchdown catches. Holy crap. Most touchdown catches by a Cowboys tight end since I think the 70s. I mean, an incredible breakout game for him now the last one it looked like the Giants defender kind of quit on the on the play but even still he was rolling out and he was getting open and he was completing the play Dak was hitting him in the hands and unlike Indianapolis he was hauling it in now for Dak himself Dak threw a career high four touchdown passes in the game including the game winner actually it's not really a game winner it was the score that would could have tied it for them if they had just kicked the PAT But basically, the the game-winning touchdown to Cole Beasley. And then the very next play, Dallas says, okay, you know what? We're not going to play for overtime. We're going to go for it now. And we're going to keep seeing if we can build Dak's confidence here. We're not going to run the ball. We're going to put it in his hands and see what happens. We'll get to that. But in, in this game, Dak goes 27 for 44 for 387 yards. Again, a career high four touchdown passes. And again, a little bit of a shaky start early. But Dallas got him rolling out of the pocket, and he was driving the ball downfield. That's what I was most excited about. He was slinging it 
And the Giants were, like I said, the Giants were trying to win this game. The Giants, Janoris Jenkins was given Amari Cooper some fits. Dallas's lone turnover comes in the form of a fumble by Amari Cooper. Cooper had another drop earlier in the game. Like, it wasn't a great game for Amari Cooper. I guess that's where you could maybe say uh, things weren't quite right for the offense. But Dak didn't let it bother him. Kept finding Jarwin for touchdowns. And then with the game on the line, 4th and 15, minute 12 left, he rolls out and he throws a dart to Cole Beasley. And Cole Beasley lays the hell out. Extends... It looks like initially on live view that he doesn't get it. I I did see the knee come down. And I admit for a half moment, I forgot that one knee is as good as two feet because I saw it and I was like, oh, he got a knee down, but he didn't get the other foot down in time because his elbow hit out of bounds next. And then I kind of like watched the replay and I was like, wait a minute. This is different though, right? This is supposed to be still a touchdown. And then the announcers kind of picked up on that too. And it was like, holy crap, what a play. This this is, I, I talked previously about how some of the broadcasters will kind of frame the talking points in a way that cuts at Dak a little bit, where even if he makes a very good throw, they're like, oh, good throw, but a great catch. Or if he makes a throw that's good, but not great, and the receiver messes it up, it's Oh, that, that throw is just not where it needs to be. Like, the, the framing is always in a negative DAC way, it seems like. But in this game, on this play, it, th- this was near flawless across the board. The announcers, th- the emphasis they were putting was, oh, great throw by Dak Prescott and a great catch by Cole Beasley. Like, there's no part of this play that you look at and say, oh, well, this part's definitively better than that. Dak's rollout. The, the throw was fantastic. I mean, you could not have asked for a better throw than he gave. And Cole Beasley, holy crap, the layout, secures the ball. That's the big thing. Not only does he get a knee down, the ball doesn't move at all. Phenomenal catch from the hot sauce there. And that sets it up, man. That was, as people have liked to throw the pun out there, that was the bee's knees in this game. And that was all all the difference for Dallas. So they go in for a game they didn't need. They balled out. They did everything in their power to get the win. And hey, it pans out. Dak has a quarterback rating of 120.2 in the game. You cannot argue, at least for this one game, you cannot argue that Dak had a great game. And you still will see people who are not even detractors who are just negative towards Dak. And they'll still point out, well, he missed a couple throws early. He missed a couple throws late to Amari Cooper, even though on one of them, Cooper actually stumbled and then never quite located the ball again. They ignore the fact that when the game was on the line, Dak made the play of the game. And then as if that wasn't enough, the Cowboys said, hey, We're not risking further injury or anything like that. Vander Esch got nicked up. It doesn't sound like it was anything too bad. Lower leg injury, but he walked off the field on his own power. I don't imagine he plays much, if at all, during practice this week, but that's fine. But they decide, you know what? We're not even, we're going to go for two. And not only are we going to go for two, we're going to keep the ball in Dak's hands because he's playing great. And we want to try and build up that confidence a little more. So again, Dak rolls out. First option's not there. Sticks a pass to Michael Gallup for the two-point conversion. Ultimately delivers Dallas the victory. First game all year, the defense has given up at least 30 points. It looked like the Giants had it. The Cooper fumble that allowed the Giants to extend their lead from four to seven. That really felt like that was it. Because you're like, the whole time you're watching that game, you're thinking, okay, they're playing great but it looks like it might not be enough and they still haven't turned the ball over at all. And oh, oh, Cooper, dang it. And it it was just a boom, boom play. Nothing Cooper could really do differently in that situation, but it just completely, it, it felt like it deflated the energy for Dallas and Dak just wouldn't allow that to stand. He came out, he balled out, he took him down for another game winning drive. And you just have to recognize he's not ever going to be a, you know, a cerebral assassin back there. He's not ever going to be a surgeon as far as the accuracy of his passes, 
But when it comes to winning time, he's pretty, pretty damn good. So let's talk into some of those specifics here. So here's a tweet after the game from David Hellman. The Cowboys play a thriller in a game they didn't need, and they win anyway. Blake Jarwin breaks out, Cole Beasley shines, and Dak gets a signature moment. If momentum is real, the Cowboys have it now at 10-6. and six. I have to agree, man. And for the people who call Dak a bus driver, Bob Sturm has the tweet for that. Again, putting out his stat line, 27-44 for 387, four touchdowns, no picks, no turnovers, and a quarterback rating of 120.2. That is some pretty strong bus driving. If you look at Dak on the season, and again, he's had a very up and down season, but if you look at the season in total for Dak, you're looking at a completion rate of 67% for just under 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns through the air, eight picks. He has another five touchdowns on the ground, I believe. So Dak, man, Dak has had a really solid year. And I know numbers don't tell everything, but it's got to mean something here that he is now the only quarterback in NFL history to throw for 20 touchdowns and run for at least five touchdowns in three consecutive seasons. No one had even done it twice. Dak's now done it three times. So that's got to mean something. And if you can just use him more to his strengths, you get a better version of him. That's what frustrates me is that most people don't see that it's more a failure of the coaching staff and how they implement Dak as opposed to the player himself. Kevin Turner from 105.3 The Fan comments after the game as well. Look at the sideline. Look at the locker room. It's not what I would have done, meaning playing Dak the full game and pretty much going all out for the win. But they all wanted to play and they wanted to win. And my God, it's a weird deal. But they ride or die with number four. They freaking love that dude. And we got RJ as well. Cowboys win 10-6. and six. They risked it all and got exactly the type of game you'd want to dial up. They did the impossible, and it's insane. Cowboys now, as Marcus Mosier points out, have won seven out of eight games. Now, the one loss was an ugly, ugly loss, but they've won seven out of eight, and yet they're still very doubted and disrespected as far as the playoff picture. So we'll see what can come of that. Obviously, they're going to have a matchup with the Seahawks, but I'm very intrigued to see what they can do to keep this ball rolling. I also want to point out, preseason, I predicted 10-6. and six. Seriously, go back and watch my video with the Sports Fury. I predicted 10-6. and six. It's out there. Next, we have Derek Eagleton. Despite being sacked four times, hit 10 times, Dak put up 387 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, no fumbles, with no Zeke, Tyron, or Zach. Hopefully, you can appreciate the quality of this performance. And you should, man. You should. It's okay to say that and that there are certainly things that you want him to be better at that you insist he needs to be better at. It's okay to want more, but you have to play it both ways. You have to recognize when the guy does something great or incredible, or even if he's even if he just does something all right, you gotta call it both ways. I've always tried to be critical when I feel like he needs to be criticized and at times I've been very harsh on Dak Prescott. I've also tried to be very fair and open when he's been good. I've said that throughout the entire season. So you got to play it both ways and I feel like people are so adverse to being wrong that they'll just dig in their heels and say, no, I don't care. He missed three passes, including what could have been an earlier game winner to Cooper. All right, bro, you do you. Cole Beasley said he knew once he saw the replay that the TD would stand. He came off the field and said to wide receiver coach Sanjay Law, I caught it clean. I didn't get my feet down. He said, I think your knee hit. I said, my knee hit, then it's a touchdown because I didn't bobble it. So an interesting kind of back and forth discussion there on that. Uh, then adding to that, Beasley talking about Dax play late in the game. That's what he does. He played a heck of a game all game, man. He's a warrior for us. He's a warrior for us, and that's what he does. He wins ball games. The stats aren't always pretty sometimes, but he's a game changer, man. Without him, we wouldn't be where we're at. This team's got Dax back. Just like as much as we hate it, they've got Garrett's back. This team has never in 
eight full years as head coach and then another two and a half essentially as offensive coordinator. This team has never quit on Jason Garrett. And they're not quitting on Dak either. He's got something He's got something there that they will all run through a brick wall for him. And that's something that as great as Romo was, it wasn't always clear that that was the case. Here's an interesting fact on Twitter from Warren Sharp. Seven of the 12 playoff teams have quarterbacks on rookie deals. A huge team-building edge. Now those teams are Kansas City, Houston, Baltimore, the Rams, Chicago, and Dallas. And... Yes, you have Philadelphia as well for Carson Wentz, but Wentz isn't even playing. It's going to be Foles. So I kind of put an asterisk on that one because he's not playing. So, But I get the idea that they're making, and it's why I've said for a while Dallas needs to capitalize on this window of time for Dak. And Dak's actually the lowest paid quarterback in the playoffs right now, being obviously a fourth-round pick on his rookie deal, whereas everyone else was a first-round pick, I believe, Looking at all this, yes, everyone else, every other rookie deal quarterback in the playoffs was a first-round pick. Dak is a fourth-round pick, by far the lowest-paid quarterback in the playoffs. And it's his second trip, so at some point, man, that that stuff's going to start paying big dividends for him, and it could be as soon as this summer. David Hellman points out, the Cowboys have played six games against 2018 playoff teams. They went 3-3 and in those games. Their wins came against New Orleans, the NFC's number one seed, against Philly and at Philly, the NFC's number six seed. Those losses were at Seattle, the NFC's five seed, who we have to play Saturday, at Houston, the AFC's three seed, and at Indianapolis, the AFC's six seed. Now the Colts are red hot. They've won something like they won something like six of their last seven, I want to say, or seven of their last eight. They basically did the same thing we did, so something there as well. Uh, I'm I'm very curious to see how this team can kind of build on this momentum that they've got because I did not expect this this Sunday. I thought, and if you watched my very brief video a couple of days before the game, you know. I anticipated this being like last season's season finale where it was something god-awful and boring like a 7-6 win. I thought it was going to be something along those lines, especially when I heard Zeke was out. But damn, damn, damn if I wasn't wrong because holy crap, they went for it and they got it. And other than the scare with Van Der Esch, they basically got out of there unscathed. Like that's incredible. Now, if LVE had suffered a serious injury there then maybe there is some discussion at like, okay, you, you got Dak going, but did you sacrifice too much? Because we can't trust in Sean Lee to stay healthy. And now we just lost Van Der Esch, a critical, critical piece of our young defense. That would have been a fair discussion. Thankfully, it uh, looks like LVE is going to be okay. And so the Cowboys, they're hot, man. They're hot, and now they've got a Saturday night date at home, at the Death Star, at the AT&T Stadium, with the Seattle Seahawks. This is the first playoff matchup with Seattle since the infamous Romo drop snap. So this is this is very intriguing to me to see what Dallas can do. Seattle's not the Seattle of old, but they've been really hot too. And they can still beat you. They're still dangerous. I think Dallas is probably going to be a narrow favorite, probably a three or four point favorite, which is about standard for the home team. But we'll see what it shakes out, man. Uh, I will do a video later in the week as well, previewing that game. One more quick note. For the second time in his three-year career, Ezekiel Elliott wins the rushing title. He completes with 1,434 yards. Second place, interestingly enough, was Saquon Barkley, who went for over 100 in the game and he had like 91 catches on the year. So he is one of three rookies ever to get into the 2,000-yard, uh, all-purpose yard mark in his rookie season, which is insane. He's probably going to win based on that. He'll probably now win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And if the Giants finish rebuilding that offensive line and can manage to add a quarterback, which they're bringing Eli back next year, so good luck with that. But... They're picking six, so they've they've got options open. I'm very weary of what the Giants could become here pretty soon, but we'll worry about that later. 
In the meantime, guys, that's going to wrap up for this episode, uh, this show. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, like us on Facebook, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell. I will be back to talk about the playoff game probably Thursday night. Until then, guys, just remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.